has to work with us and our emotions to try to get us to settle down and hold steady. Okay? Now, look at that scripture. For out of his fullness, abundance, we have all received. Now, put yourself in. They're talking about us. All has had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another. Now, believe that. Remember the scripture in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 13? I speak what I believe. All right, everybody believe that? Mm -hmm. Does everybody believe that? Wave at me or wiggle your nose or something. Wink at me. Oh, okay, I know you heard me. That's important. Because, see, you can go off on the other end. Nothing ever happens good up to me. I almost went into a depression yesterday. Almost now. I didn't go into it because I remember my preaching. <laughs> Wonderful when you can remember your preaching. And I, I got a hold of it real quick. I said, no, devil, I ain't going that way. And I started praising God that I was in Christ Jesus. Man, I got up and I started dancing with Susan. How about praise you, Lord? I'm in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, one, two, three, four. One, two. <laughs> Y'all are getting happy over my depression. You think I'm crazy. Sisters and brothers, you got what you got to do. Or you'll slide down in that depression. Come on, church. Come on now. Get. I'm speaking truth, man. This thing is a fight. And you've got to get radical in it. Radical. You can't sit there and just patty cake. You've got to get yourself. Now, what am I doing when I do that? My emotions are aiding me in that time of depression. And it's mounting up, and the Spirit of God is mounting I'm staring the Spirit of God in me. I'm obeying the Word of God. And God has a reason for us to start praising Him when you're at the lowest point. Easy when you're up here. Somebody just mailed you $100,000. Of course, you're going to give it to Rick. But anyway, now you're back in depression again. Right? <laughs> Stick to the teaching, Bob. Okay. Look what it says now. For out of his fullness, his abundance, God's grace, God's mercy, God's power, out of the goodness of God, we have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessings upon spiritual blessings and even favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gifts. Somebody want to, Charles, sh sh give us a little demonstration of what I did there. A little d demonstration. Of oh, man, that's good. Mary, over here, Mary, come on. Look out now. Woo! Whoa! Glory! Hallelujah! Woo! Man, listen. Get that in your mind. Get that in your heart. Blessings after blessing. Grace after abundance. Abundance supplied of everything. We speak what we what? Believe. Not what we feel. Not what we feel. But what we believe. Where is that found? Hmm? Second what? Corinthians. That's right. Four what? Yeah, 13. Put it on the board. If I miss that, I'll go check the Bible. <laughs> Got it, Rick? Yes, we have the same spirit of faith. Notice, same spirit of faith as he had. Who is he? Come on now, I've been preaching on that for about a month. David, David very, who said that? Who said that? Frank! Give Frank a hand. Hey, he remembers as he had, who wrote. See, see, we could quote scriptures back in this day. We could say, well, we have the same faith that he had. 
well, where's that at? Well, we know where it's at, right? Where's it at? Psalms what? 110, verse 10, or something like that? I forgot myself. That's wrong. No, but notice what it says. I have believed. That's what David says. And therefore have I spoken. And then Paul jumps in there and says, Yeah, we too believe, and therefore we speak, because we got the same faith that King David had. Hallelujah! 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 And David was the father of Jesus. Way back down the lineage. Same faith. Same faith that comes from God. So we speak what we feel. No. We speak with what? We believe. We believe. Well, what do you believe? Believe what the Word says. God has given us abundance. Let's go back to that scripture now in John 1, 16 and, and hit 17 next. Now, you remember, you've got to write that scripture down and remember that. That's what you've got to start doing. Okay, next, 17. For while the law was given through Moses, grace and unearned, undeserved favor and spiritual blessings and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, the trouble with a lot of people today, the reason their emotions are down, because they mix law with grace. It's like mixing water with oil. How many of you know what will happen if you do that? Hmm? We got any mechanics in here? You can't mix oil with water. The oil will just come down to the bottom, water will come to the top. We are under grace. We believe what God says. We're not under Moses. We're not in Moses. We are in Christ. And in Christ. All the blessings of God, all the promises of God are yea and yea men in Christ Jesus. So we're in Christ. Grace and mercy came by Jesus Christ. The law came by Moses. Now turn to Romans 7. Romans 7. Because you see... If you're in a dry place, many times it's because of our own fault. Okay, not all the times now. Uh, in a, you can, we can be in a dry place to, the way we think. Now, th hear what I'm saying. The way we think about situations and how we look at situations can bring us in a dry place. Can anybody identify with that? Has anybody heard me? Am I coming out okay? Am I speaking right? Clear? i got to make sure that you're getting this. <clears throat> Look what it says in uh, uh, Romans 7, 4. 7, 4. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, that's us, you have undergone death as to the law. Everybody see that? Through the crucified body of Christ. When Christ was crucified on the cross, remember you were in Christ. You got that? You were in Christ. Christ was on the cross, and all of us that believe that God's children was in Christ on the cross. Okay? Now look what it says. Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death. When did you undergo, undergo death? Mike, you want to answer that? When Christ died, you died. Everybody see that? You died. The old Adam, dead, buried. Trouble with us, sometimes we resurrect him, don't we? So you see, so you got to see it as God sees it. In your mind, you have no obligation at all to satisfy the flesh. That's not hard if you know how to walk in the Spirit. 
All right, let's, let's finish this now. So that now you may belong to another. So you died, you were crucified through the law when Christ was crucified, and now we belong to another. Who is that another? Somebody, come on. Say, say Jesus. Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus. We're married to Jesus. We're the bride. We're married to Jesus. We died to the law. And now we belong to another. Okay? I'm going slow for a reason. We've got to get it. Because if you don't, you'll stay in a dry place 24-7. <clears throat> Anybody hear me? If we don't get it, we'll, we'll live in a dry place. A dry place is dry. Your mouth, your tongue sticks to the top of your mouth. All right, look at the scriptures now. So that now you may belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead. Who was raised from the dead? Jesus. So we belong to him in order that we may bear fruit to God. All right. Now, how many of you know if you're under law, you're under a curse? Hello? Did you hear me? All right, let's go to the next verse real quick. We've got to move fast. I only got 100 scriptures I want to share tonight. When we were living in the flesh, notice this. When we were living in the flesh, when were you living in the flesh? Before we died in Christ. Remember that? Y'all remember, don't you? Every Saturday night. Don't you, don't you remember every Saturday night you was in the flesh? Huh? I got one person back there doing like this. Elizabeth. Beyond, what did you do when before you were when when how old were you when you got saved? Huh? You, you were sixteen. All right, just team. How were, what were you saved? I was, I was 12 when I accepted Christ, but I never could. Did you backslide any? Huh? So you didn't do nothing on Saturday night, but stay home and make biscuits. Mary. No? I'm, I'm backing up. Sit. There's one back there. I know that. All right, listen. Here's, here's, the picture. here's the picture I want you to see when we were in the flesh. But we are not in the flesh anymore because we've died, right? When did we die? When Christ was crucified, our flesh died. And now we're married to another. We belong to Him. And now we have a new life in Christ. So quit identifying with the old Adam and begin to identify with the last Adam, who is Jesus Christ. All right. Let's get going here, Bob. Okay, look what it says. Now, when we were living in the flesh, mere physical lives, that was over here on that side of the cross, the sinful passions that were awakened on Saturday night arose up by what the law makes sin. We're constantly operating in our natural powers, in our bodily organs, in the sensitive appetites and the wills of the flesh so that we bore fruit for death. That is, when we were lost, separated from God, we were dead in our trespasses and sins, we were in the flesh. Now, so we died with Christ, and we have no obligation now to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, so now you're over here, and you've been made righteous. You're a child of God. 
your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. <clears throat> but that old Adam is a sneaky critter. Even though you, you know you're doing great, you're loving God, at everything, and for about a year and a half, it's hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself in a dry place. And that old man stirs up inside of you. That as far as God's concerned, he died there with Christ. But it stared with you in his Saturday night. And you ride by the honky-tonk. And your car, you have no control. It just turns right into the honky-tonk. And you bust the door over and say, Here I am! You have just backslidden into the flesh. So the next morning you have this headache. The next morning you have this headache. You say, Oh God, forgive me. What was that scripture Pastor Bob was talking about? Uh, John, John something. John one twenty. John one. One, 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 what? One, one, you know it backwards and forwards. One, what? One, nine, one, say one, nine. First John, one, nine. Honey, write it on your wrist. Because it says, if you have done something that's sinful, it's going to stay on you, and next thing you know, you're going to be under, you're going to put yourself under the law, and you're going to try to, to get better and do better the next time. Because it says, I should not commit adultery and fornication. Uh, thy shall not steal. Uh, thy shall not. Thy shall not. Thy shall not. And you just are working so hard day and night. Oh, you're busy. You're here and you're busy. Oh, my goodness. You're trying to work yourself back into the, uh, into the good graces of God again. And you put yourself under a curse. So how do you get out from under all of that? Fall on your knees and say, God, I have sinned against the holy God. I need grace upon grace to enable me, James 4, 6, put it on the board. James 4, 6. I need more grace and more grace. James 4, 6. But he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all the other, others fully to go out on Saturday night and do the shuffle, 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 shuffle. See, some of y'all can't identify with that. Now, you could probably identify with this. Hey, did you hear about Brother Bob going out to the honky-tonk the other night? Huh? That's called gossip. Uh, ooh, oh, I, uh, oh, y'all gonna identify with that? Hey, no Saturday night honky tonk, just gossip. <laughs> uh huh. But listen, the same grace, the same grace, same mercy, the same cleansing of the blood cleanses the person that goes the honky tonky as the person that. Tearing down people's personalities, exposing their sin in front of everybody. Huh? So we all come. And all of a sudden you hear this message. Folks, you don't have to do that no more. You died with Christ. See, when you were in the flesh, so he'll give us more and more grace. Most say, that is why he says God sets himself against the proud and haughty, but gives grace continuously to the lowly and those who are humble enough to receive it. Humble enough to receive it. Hmm. God gives grace to the proud. What is that scripture? He gives grace to the humble and resists the proud. You know, it doesn't seem like anything's working for me anymore. I don't know what's going on. I just don't know. Have you checked your pride level lately? Uh, anybody ever had pride with me? Raise your hand. Yeah, you were born with it came from Adam, but see, it died too at Calvary. 
See, you're a new creature. Your spirit man is recreated, but your mind has not been renewed. You're still thinking Saturday night honky-tonk. You're still thinking about yabby, yabby, yabby. Instead of getting your mind renewed, because how are you going to be transformed? By the renewing of your mind, you and me will be transformed. And most of us is transformed now to a degree. We don't go out on the honky-tonk no more. We don't gossip no more. There's a lot of things we don't do no more because God has worked in us and done the work in us. Now, let's go to uh, this next scripture because I want you to see this. Go to Romans 6, 14. I've got to move fast. Time is fast. I've got to unfold this quick. <clears throat> Romans uh, 6, 14. Are you there? Are we ready? Notice what it says. For honky-tonk shall not any longer exert dominion over you. What do you say? Sin. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you are not under law as slaves, but under grace as sub subjects of God's favor and mercy. Well, I'm just going to try to do better. <laughs> yeah, you... You'll, you'll do pretty good for three or four days and you'll fall again. And then you'll feel all guilty. You feel all condemned. Takes you a couple weeks, a couple sessions in Preston Bob's office back there to get you up to par again. But if you don't know how to walk in the Spirit and keep yourself from getting yourself under the law by trying and trying and trying. Don't, 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 don't. You walk in the Spirit. Your faith goes into God. That God is working in you, taking those desires out. And it's so easy to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, which I'll show you the scriptures in a little bit. Yesterday, we had to get a little battery for one of our <clears throat> things on the wall up there to go toot, 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 you know, fire alarms. So Susan, me, and they had something else. Susan had to get some little cups for our uh, communion we have every, every day. So we went out there. <clears throat> See, I, I'm a cookie monster. Y'all know what a cookie monster is? Devout cookies. Okay. So, now, here's the way it works. See, see I, I like to go in that uh, it's, it's Dollar General. Because you, you can get good cookies for just a dollar. You know what I mean? And see, I got a lot of conservativeness in me. And so, anyway, so I go in. I'm not sure how God works now. And so you walk down this, you walk down this aisle, and these aisles, cookies and all the goodies down these aisles, okay? And so, now here's the way it works. See, I, you know, I walk, and it's like, <laughs> it's, it's a drawing thing. See, it's, it's, sin is a drawing thing. <clears throat> when God does the work, this is a testimony, because I've been praying that scripture God, give me more grace and grace because I have a tendency to devour cookies. Now, here's the way it works. So help me. I went by and no drawing at all. No, no drawing to go in there and buy those cookies. I walked by there. I said, hmm. Say, you've you got to learn to know what's going on in here. Uh, okay, you've you got you to know that. that okay, I, I know what's going on in me. No drawing whatsoever. And I shared that testimony with Susan, and I'm sharing it with you tonight. I've overcome cookies. 
cookie, cookie, cookie. That's who I can pick on. Can I pick on you, Charles? Please give me a break. He said, give me a break. What, 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 did, he, what did he say? All right. Playboy magazine. Say, Playboy magazine. So, you know, and, and he, of course, he walking down over. Right, Charles? <laughs> Not me. Okay, well, good. I'm testifying. It don't bother you. <laughs> Look at it reminds me of the time when somebody had a Playboy out in our driveway on Middlecliff Avenue. And uh, one of our granddaughters, she was about five years old, and Susan sees And it wasn't mine. It wasn't mine. <laughs> I know it had Bob written on it, but it wasn't mine. <laughs> no, it wasn't mine. I got, believe it or not, I got victory. I mean, it, it's hard sometimes. I've got to help us help the Lord out on that. <laughs> huh? Okay. Nobody in here is like that. Anyway, Susan, Susan goes out and gets the shovel. And my granddaughter, what you doing, Grandma? We got to get this thing out of the front yard. She picks it up with a shovel. Puts it in our little thing in the back where you build fires. And she went and got the matches and heard that the granddaughter burnt that thing. And I come home, I said, where's my plate magazine at? <laughs> Just kidding. Stick to the subject, Bob. Yes, Susan. Yeah. I will not let Susan watch this DVD. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over us any longer. But now listen, you've got to know the difference between the law and grace. Because law is don't, 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 don't. That's why God took us out from under that and put us in grace where His Spirit can work in us to remove those desires in us out. And it's so easy when God does that work in us to love people, to help people, to walk by the cookie aisle, walk by the uh, Playboy magazine aisle. There is no pulling anymore. You're just free. Am I too far out in the left field? Now, this is what I've experienced in my life. I know what the Scripture says. Let's move on real quick. Like, let's look, go to the next verse real quick. 15. I'm sorry. Let's go back to uh, Romans 7. Hmm. 4 again. Romans 7, 4. Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone... Death as to the law. <clears throat> the law is still there, but we've died to it. The law is still in effect, but we've died to it. You must see that. The law had gone nowhere. The law is for the transgressor. The law reveals to people where they missed God's best. And that they have sinned to bring them to Christ where Christ can do that work in them. That Christ can come in their lives and do the work in us. And then through us. We must understand that. So I'm saying all this tonight that your faith, your faith will go to God and say, Lord, you can do it. Uh, let's got to move fast. Okay, praise God. Uh, let's go to the next verse real quick. When we were living in the flesh, mere physical lies over there on that side of the cross, the sinful passions that were awakened and aroused up by what? The law makes sin. The law stirs the sin factor in our flesh. Hmm? Let it go through your brain. We're constantly operating in our natural powers, in our body organs, in the 
competitive appetites and wills of the flesh so that we were bored fruit for death. Go to the next verse. You're writing these down, study them like I have for 50-some years. But now we are discharged. Who's we? Us Christians are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with it, having died to once restrained and held us captive. The law. So now we serve not under obedience to the old code or written regulations, but under obedience to the prompting of the Spirit in newness. Oh, children, 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 please get it. May the Spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon each and every one of you, and me, and all the folks up there. I've had people come to me and say, Bob, I've tried. I've tried. A slave to trying. Because they're trying to please God by keeping the law in their own power. Okay, I've got to move fast. And I need to spend more time on all these scriptures, but I've got others that are so important to accentuate what I'm trying to... Co- notice, the, notice the obedience of the prompting. The prompting. You must know what's going on inside your spirit man. You must understand his movements. You must understand what he's doing. Because if you're under the law, condemnation is on you. Guilt is on you. Listen to me. Guilt condemnation you're not free you're in bondage and yet you're a child of God yet you're in bondage we're in bondage if we're trying to please God by trying to keep the law but we do keep the law when we walk in the spirit walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh now how do you walk in the spirit very simple it's not complicated read your bible <laughs> It'll tell you how to walk. I know instantly. I, I don't even have to read the Bible. I know instantly if I'm not walking in the Spirit. And you do too. Talking about people, flesh or spirit. Come on, let me hear you. Huh, huh, hey. What? Right, flesh. Praying for people. Flesh or Spirit. Spirit. Robbing God, flesh. Loving God, spirit. Being kind, fruits of the spirit. You know how, it's simple. But if you do that other thing, that invites the devil in your life. And he will torment you to no end. We've all experienced that. We've all goofed. And you didn't get back into your peace until you surrender all. Humbled yourself and admit, admit before God Almighty, I'm trying to do it all myself. And now God invites you over where the rest is. See, there's a rest. Hebrew talks about a rest. And that rest is in the Spirit. You don't try to make God love you. You know He loves you. And when you know He loves you, there's a rest. His love has been shed in our heart. Perfect love casts out fear. Does God really love me? Will God really forgive me? Is God up there ready to beat me down with a baseball bat? No. That's law. There's no rest in that. But when you're in the Spirit, just everybody, get, just, just do like this. Just, 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 just let it all go. Just let it all go. All that tension... Anxiety, just let it go. Because when you're trying to please God, all that anxiety, and we do it unconsciously a lot until the Holy Spirit shows you how to tap into the rest. Well, you're not doing enough. You need to do more. Well, how much is enough? I don't know, but just, you got to do more and more and more. Well, 
Ain't no rest in that, children. God accepts us because of his grace minus nothing. Oh, I know it's hard for us to understand that. The people will never come into that rest of the Holy Ghost. You'll come a place in your life And I'm using myself as an example. Let's say I sin. Oh, I didn't rob a bank. I didn't commit adultery. I didn't shoot Mike. Send him to heaven. But I lied. I lied. Told a lie. Because I know I'm not talking to nobody in here. And now that I cannot rest because there is no rest until I can get straight with God on that. And I say, Susan, <sighs> you ask who ate that piece of pie in the refrigerator? Mary came down. <laughs> <coughs> now listen, there's something in us, it's called the blame syndrome, and we got to blame somebody else. Mary says it wasn't me. It was Elizabeth. <laughs> You remember in the garden? Eve blamed the devil. And Adam blamed Eve. Really, I blame you, God, that woman you gave me. <laughs> and, and, and you, but you learn, but now you eat up with that. You, you, you can't rest until you come to that person and say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? And Susan, huh, you're forgiven. It's so easy. Let's see, the other day there was something I was a little scared to tell her. What was it? I can't think of what it was right now, but... Uh, oh, yeah, I know what it is. We had two chickens' uh, legs in the, in the refrigerator. And they were there maybe, I don't know, I can't keep up with it. Susan does. Maybe four days in the refrigerator and you don't eat them, maybe... You need to, you know, get rid of it, you know. And so she said, well, would you take those and go down there uh, in the woods and throw them over there <laughs> across the fence? <laughs> Susan says, stick to the subject. Boy, she, we got a little pa pass a patch of woods, you know. I was going to take them down there and put them in the woods, and we've got a couple of possums around there. You, you ever see it? They come around your house? Yeah, those possums, yeah. Yeah, one, name, one of them is named Bob and Susan. The other one is named Susan, okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I put them in a, a, a sack and, and tied it real good, p paper uh, from, uh, from uh, Walmart, you know, and knotted it real good. She wasn't looking, and I put them in the trash can because I didn't want to walk down there and put them in the woods because, see, my golf cart is out of order right now, and the man's coming next week to put new batteries in it. So I put them in there, and right, my, my piece. How could something so simple dis move, disturb my peace? So I come in, and I, and, I, and I said to myself, you might as well get it over with, Bob. Get it over with. It ain't new to walk all day. You got to preach tonight. You can't stand before the people, you know, with all this condemnation and guilt. And I say, Susan! Yes, dear? I didn't put the chicken in the woods like you told me. I said, I put them in this paper and I tied it in a knot. And I really want to spare them in and see if it stinks. Because, you know, it, it takes seven days for the trash man. And it, if, you, if you throw that stuff in there, it stinks anyway, but it really stinks. But, uh, uh, and so 
She said, oh, that's okay, darling. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Not just a little thing like that, but when you're walking in the Spirit, you know when you're off the road just a little bit. You know those things when you're driving your car down the road, and you get a little bit to the right, and it goes boom, 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 and you come back over. Huh? When you're walking in the Spirit, see, you don't need the law now. you got the lawgiver living in you, and he'll let you know if you're getting a little bit over here, you boom, 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 and you steer back over here, and all of a sudden you're driving on this side, and a boom, 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 and you get back on. He leads the way. He directs you. He guides you. Don't fall, Bob. It's so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. It took years for me to learn how to walk in the Spirit and the rest and the beauty. Oh, it's wonderful. Wow. All those years struggling for nothing. I can't believe the time. Okay, where am I at? All right, let's move real quick. Like, um, let's go to the next verse real quick. Like, mm hmm. All right, right down the road there. Are we there? So, what then do we conclude, Paul says? Is the law... Verse 6. Verse 6. But now we are discharged from the law and have de uh, terminated all intercourse with it, have died to what once restrained and held us captive. Can you see that? So now we serve not under obedience to the old code or the law or written regulations, but under obedience to the prompting, prompting of the Spirit in newness of life. All right, I want you to turn now, if you will. Turn to Hebrews 13 real quick. Probably have to quit on this. I've got so many good scriptures I want to share because we want to know how to get out of this dryness, how to get out from under that bondage of the law. Hebrews 13, verse 20. It's up on the board. Here we go. All right, are we ready? Now may the God of peace. Now remember that God is a God of peace. If you don't have peace in your life, God, where are you? <laughs> He's the God of peace. You, may probably, you might have put yourself under the law, trying to make yourself perfect by your own effort. And I'm here to tell you, you can't do it. Who is the author and the giver of peace? That is God Almighty. He's the God of peace. And he's the author and the giver of peace who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood that seals and ratifies the everlasting agreement, covenant, testimony. Now, get to the next verse, and I want you to remember the God of peace. Everybody say, for the God of peace will strengthen. Say, carry that on. It is God that will strengthen See, it's God that will do the work in you. Catch this, write this down, memorize this verse. Strengthen, complete, perfect, and make you what you are to be and equip you with everything good that you may carry out His will. <laughs> Meditate on it. Who's going to do the work? See, our faith has to go in. When you pray, you pray that prayer. God, it is you that will strengthen me. You will complete what you started. You will perfect and make, make me what I ought to be and equip me with everything good that you that may carry out, that I may carry out your will. Now notice this. While he himself works in you, works in you, and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight 
through Jesus Christ the Messiah, to whom be the glory forever and ever to the ages the ages. Amen. Put your faith in God. Get on your knees and say, God, all these years I've tried to become something that you told me to become in my own power, and first I repent. Hello? Hello? Repent. Because all you're going to do is live a miserable life and stay in a dry place. And the way you're going to come out is say, Lord, only you can equip me and make me what I ought to be by your Spirit working in me, bringing me to that place where I'm available for you to do something through me. Suck it in, saints. Powerful. For those that are constantly trying to perfect themselves, oh yeah. You can perfect the outside of your life. Like Jesus said to the Pharisees, but inward, inside the cup. How many know what I'm talking about? And I'm not saying this to put none of us down, but that you might rise up and realize that the Lord will do it. You could not save yourself. You could not kill yourself. He killed you. He put you in Christ, and when Christ died, you died, that old you. But now that power of sin is still embedded in that old Adam in us, and it takes a while for God to what we call sanctification, sanctifying us inwardly, where inwardly we're clean, we have no bad motives, we're not have no ambitions to be greater than somebody else. I'm not trying to be greater than Charles or, or Willie or, or, or Frank or anybody. I'm just me. I can relax at that. There's things I can do. There's things I can't do. The things I can't do, I'll get Charles or Willie to do it or Frank. We're all part of the one body. No striving. No backbiting. Just the peace of God engulfing the whole body. And unity is formed. And God says, where I see the unity, I will command the blessing. I know that if you're not careful, your mind is going to go natural. And you're going to think natural. Yeah, but. Wait a minute. But. Goats, but. Sheep go, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. You won't have to try to be good. You can't help from being good because he that saved you, he that called you, did the work in you. For it is God working in us making us willing to do his good pleasure. I know most of you guys got it together, but this tape goes out. And I deal with so many people that struggle. They struggle in every area of their life. They don't know how to handle money. They, they don't know. <laughs> They're like sheep without a shepherd. And I try to teach them. Now, this is the way you walk. This is how you do it. See, I don't know how to make a cake. I would try to tell uh, my sister how to make a cake. She knows how to make a cake. If I want to learn how to make a cake, be a good student, Bob, and listen. She'll teach you. She'll teach me, right? You would teach me. And I do exactly like she says, and you'll say, Justine made this cake. And I say, no, I made it. <laughs> follow me as I follow Christ. If I stop following Christ, start following Charles.
or somebody that's following it. You understand what I'm saying? In our, my life, in Susan's life, we do a lot of things for the, for the sheep. Folks, let's just bow our head. I want everybody to say, Lord, Lord. forgive me Amen. for trying to do everything myself, Amen. trying to be perfect in every aspect by my human effort, which I understand has brought nothing but anxiety and worry in my life. Yeah, because I feel like I'm not accepted by you if I have some frailties. Yeah, that's the way it goes. But Lord, you accept me. Just like I am. And I committed to you to do the work in me that you might do something through me. It's all in your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, there's a bonus to everything in this, but I want to load you down with the grace of God a little bit, and then we will get into some of the other things that, that uh, God wants to teach us. Did you understand the message tonight? Did you understand the message tonight? Do you feel any freer? You do? Know?